Volkswagen Canada just gave me the keys to this brand new 2024 Atlas Peak Edition. I am here in Collingwood, Ontario to take a look at the history of the area and the history behind the world's most influential dog. I love the area around Nottawasaga Bay on the southernmost shores of Georgian Bay. So I packed some things into the Atlas Peak Edition and headed north towards Collingwood. You know Collingwood these days as the vibrant city a couple hours north of Toronto, home of the best skiing and snowboarding in Ontario, full of cute shops and restaurants and nuzzled into the southern shores of Georgian Bay. But the tidy and picturesque nature of the Collingwood area is quite the change from its industrial past. I am in Collingwood Harbour right now, which has changed immensely since the 1980s. This is where giant ships were built for decades and decades and decades. The construction of ships for the Great Lakes occurred dramatically in the harbour starting in the 1880s, closing shop in the mid-1980s. One thing you notice when driving through Collingwood is how many historical buildings are in the town and how beautifully preserved many of them are. The town saw decades of prosperity, evident when you see the homes just off the main streets. Shipping was big business and Collingwood was a very important hub. Now Collingwood these days is a tourist destination, most especially drawing from Blue Mountain a few kilometers away, Ontario's largest ski resort. I am in Blue Mountain right now in the village and I have to tell you, when you look around, as long as you don't look up and see the uh, ski runs, you very well could be in Whistler or Mont Tremblant. I love looking at old photos of this place because it is absolutely insane how different it is and how much more developed it is right now. So let's take a look back at some footage and photos of this exact space. So let's take a quick look at what Georgian Peaks looked like just west of Blue Mountain in the summer of 1965. Many of you watching will likely have some old Blue Mountain pottery kicking around your house. The origins of Blue Mountain pottery though are charming. The ceramics were actually sold to subsidize and fund the ski resort. Two men, Jozo Weeder and Dennis Tupi, both from the former Czechoslovakia, started making and selling the pieces in the gift shop of the small ski resort in the 1950s, going on to become one of Canada's most famous pottery collections and shuttering in 2004. From there, I headed further west to the quaint town of Thornbury, before, of course, looking into the most influential dog in the world's history. I am in Thornbury, Ontario right now, in between Meaford and Collingwood. It's a great little town. Cute little shops, cafes, restaurants, a bar. I've spent quite a bit of time in this town over the last few years, and I. I really like it. Now, one thing I love about Thornbury is the fact that all the buildings are the same as they were 100, 120 years ago. The stores and businesses inside them, obviously, have changed. Nice coffee shops. I am in Meaford, Ontario right now on this cold February afternoon. The town is about 11,000 people, really picturesque little spot just west of Collingwood. Now, Meaford is famous for something dear to my heart, the world's most influential dog, Beautiful Joe. The story of Joe an abused mutt from the small Georgian bay town of Meaford, served as a turning point in Western culture. We take for granted now that animals deserve respect, that dogs and cats warrant help. And our view of animals now and animal rights movements writ large 
almost entirely can be viewed as manifestations emitting from one single author, one single book, and one single scraggly dog in Meaford, Ontario. Now, Margaret Marshall Saunders, who published under the more masculine sounding name Marshall Saunders, was from Nova Scotia. She grew up with some privilege, attending school in Edinburgh and France, honing her writing skills. In 1892, Margaret Marshall Saunders came to Meaford to visit her brother. Now, her brother's family had a dog, a dog that two years prior had been heavily abused by a man in this town. That man cut off his ears, his tail. Now, Margaret saw the love that her brother and his family had for this dog, Joe, and she wrote the book Beautiful Joe. Beautiful Joe went on to be the first Canadian book ever to sell over a million copies. And this book that she wrote from the point of view of Joe himself changed the world as we know it. It changed the way people view animals. And to a large extent, the SPCA movements and all the animal rights movements that we take for granted now really stemmed from the inspiration from her book, Margaret Marshall Saunders' book, Beautiful Joe. By the 1930s, the book had sold over 7 million copies around the world, being translated into countless languages. So, Saunders' story about the abused dog in this small town kickstarted what we take for granted today. This little puppet, Meaford, helped reframe how humans interact with animals. He was the world's most influential dog. Now, the story of Saunders isn't glorious. She led a modest life, mostly in Toronto, publishing books that typically highlighted the plights of those most vulnerable and donated many of her profits to animal rights groups. But it is astounding how much good came from this woman in Nova Scotia. I have to say, one of my favorite things that I've come across about Canadian history in the last few years is the story behind Beautiful Joe. I find it touching. I find it touching that an actual instance of abuse turned into so many positive things. So being here in Meaford at Beautiful Joe Park and even just being in Meaford in general, knowing that something so beautiful came from something so dark. Um, as a dog guy, as a lifelong dog guy, I think that's pretty great. After a few days around Georgian Bay, I headed back to Toronto. But I was glad I had the Volkswagen Atlas Peak Edition because the weather really turned. And having a bold SUV like that made things easy. So I was just talking about the world's most influential dog and Rose. Rose just came, had some opinions. The beautiful and lovely and elderly Rose. So I guess the role of who was the world's most influential dog actually is up for debate. Because all of my dogs have opinions. And you might too.